Uh, Gerald, you said at Media Day you were hoping that maybe you could showcase some of your striking in there. Uh, do you, how do you, so how do you grade your performance in there uh, based off of what happened? Uh, I, I think it went pretty well, you know. Um, I, get, I guess it was kind of probably for the fans a little bit slower of a start, but, you know, I was just fighting a smart technical fight at first, and Bruno Silva is a really dangerous guy. And if you run in there like that, you can get put to sleep real quick. So I had to, I had to play the smart game and, you know, show off some of my other, other moves, and I think it went well. You also said that even in your past fights, when you hope to put showcase your striking, you do, but you kind of whittle them away and then submit them. That's pretty much what happens in this too. So did you envision this end? Is this how you envisioned this fight ending in there as well? Uh, yeah, I was hoping. I thought I was going to get a walk-off because, man, I've seen fights stop for less. And uh, I admired my work a little too long, and then I, you know, came in probably a little too close. He grabbed a hold of me, and I was hitting him, and I was like, man, this dude's too tough. He's going to cling onto my leg, and I ain't going to be able to get him out of there. So I just went to my bread and butter, and I got a hold of the neck, and he was so far rocked at that point, there was no way he was getting out of it. And then that left, that dropped him. Is that something you had planned specifically for Bruno, or just something that you knew you could capitalize in the moment? Oh, that's just something I like to do. And like, I know he reaches and overextends himself, and uh, me and my guy Jason Stroud, we have been working on standing, you know, staying kind of back and just waiting for that left and dropping it. And, you know, I dropped that little anchor punch and put him down, and that was all she wrote. And I believe you called out Alex Petrovsky, and the, like we couldn't really hear it back then. Yeah, there. yeah, no, he called me out after his last fight, and I just said, hey, you want the smoke, run it. I'm like, let's go. Uh, Gerald, I was actually just curious, going into that third round, just what were you feeling? Because it felt like, you know, there might have been some momentum changes and it felt like, hey, one of these guys might have to really put it on. Did you feel very comfortable like, hey, you know what, I'm still in control of this. I'm going to get him, I'm going to get this done decision or finish. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to go back and watch myself and I was in there, so it's kind of hard for me to tell, right? But I felt like momentum was on my side the whole time. There was like maybe two moments where Silva caught me with some good, good strikes where he cracked me pretty good and I kind of had to bail out of there but I felt like I had the momentum through the whole fight and you know he kept I could see him getting tired especially in between that second and third round we were looking and he was gassing and I felt fresh so I knew it was like I'm either just going to put a pace on you and you're going to have to give me something or you're going to open yourself up and I'm going to capitalize on it. Congrats on a great finish. Thank you. Have you had the opportunity to watch Andre Petrovsky at all and like what do you make of his skill set as an opponent? Uh, he likes to wrestle and grapple a lot. But yeah, they, I've seen, uh, I know I've seen one of his fights, but yeah, he's not bad at all. You know, no, no knocks against his skills. Um, we know some of the same people. I know he comes from a, a really good storied school with a lot of good grapplers, but hey, I mean, someone says my name, I'm down to get froggy, so <laughs> let's go. Is there a date that you would like that fight to go down, or like when do you want to get back in? Uh, it, so, you know, truth be told, I, I had been told that I, I may need uh some work done on my shoulder but it feels good if i can wait on that and you know keep riding this because it doesn't dislocate or anything then we'll see but um you know if i am good to go another three four months and let's do it would it be hard to go back to the apex after fighting here in front of fans again yeah i would i feel like after that performance you see what i can do in front of a crowd keep me in front of a crowd I don't think he's fought in front of a crowd in the UFC yet. Do you think that would play any sort of advantage, or is that just like I, I don't care. I, that is, whatever is with him and his stuff, I'm sure he'd be happy to, but like, honestly, I just want to fight in front of a crowd. I could give a shit what the other guy feels like. The shoulder thing, is that a pre-existing sort of thing that you've just been carrying around, or is that something that they told you tonight? Uh, that's something from my last fight, but, I mean, like I said, it hasn't bothered me at all. Um, you know, I did see one guy that said, gave me a timetable, like I, I should get it done, but I could definitely fit one more fight in within that timetable for sure. It's just a matter of like, you know, I don't know. I've heard conflicting things, but it feels fine. And if I can wait to do it, I'll wait to do it as long as it's not going to like, man, someone's getting beat up out there. Yeah. As long as nothing, you know, it doesn't put me in any kind of long-term danger and I feel good. I, I feel like, you know, I should just keep my hot streak going. And if it makes you feel good, the same sort of pop happened when your fight was going on and we were interviewing somebody. Your uh, you're, you're finish there kind of nice. interrupted the interview as well. Sweet. Um, did you have a particular game plan for him, or did you know that as the fight went on that, that you guys would try to tire him out and just kind of reassess as, as it went on? 
Uh, well, the very first most important part of my game plan was don't get knocked out because he likes to do that to people and he hits really hard. So uh, I feel like I accomplished that with my movement. Um, you know, I was a little bit faster. I kept him guessing with level changes. I you know, made sure I didn't stand right in front of him too much. Um, you know, the one or two times I did, he did crack me a couple times and I had to, you know, get the hell out of dodge. But other than that, that's, you know, a lot more movement, mixing the kicks. I got really good kicks. I got really heavy kicks. Uh, even when I kicked the leg, he was off balance and, you know, couldn't set down to throw. So just played it smart. And then when I saw my opening, I took it. And, and last one for me. And you kind of mentioned it a little bit. And I wondered if you saw or felt the same thing when you rocked him and dropped him and then you went in and you secured the choke. He looked almost like he was out and that he came to after you secured the choke in there. Did, uh, you feel him? Did he feel like he was out? I couldn't really tell. Like I said, the way he crumbled, I was like, man, I've seen people stop it for less. And then I don't know if he kind of sat forward or if I came too close. I might have rushed in a little too much. But, like, I hit him a couple times and he still latched onto my leg. And I'm like, okay, now if he, like, somehow gets his wits back and grabs onto my leg, now I'm stuck in this stupid position instead of finishing the fight. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just get my hips away, make some space. I had been cracking the dude in the face all night, and it took that one perfect shot to, like, do that. So I didn't think that the ground and pound was going to completely get it done. So I was like, well, I know for sure, especially if they're rocked, I can choke out pretty much any man walking this earth. So why not make this an early night? And so once you secured it, you, you knew you knew at that point it was yeah. game over. Yeah, there were, uh, especially after you get rocked like that. I, you know, and it, like when I go for guillotines and chokes, especially, I have always preach this: you do not have to guillotine people off your back. You can stay on top. All right, like you just saw it. I was like on my knees driving into him because then if he does try to go, I can go for a mounted guillotine. Or if I really do have to go to my back, I'm off on an angle and my legs are wrapped up in a way that I can always reverse and get back on top. So. I see people do that and they pull guard and I'm like, now the dude's gonna pop out and you're gonna lose position. Whereas like, if I get your neck and I hurt you, I'm staying on top because I'll let the submission go to punch you in the face before I'll hang on to the submission and give up top position. Awesome. Congrats on the victory, it was, it was quite a performance. Thank you. I was gonna ask you about the technique, but I think you just covered it right there. So, um, you know, you said you know that you can choke anyone out after they've been rocked, but it was late in the fight. You guys were sweaty. How much more difficult is to pull off that move late in the fight when the, you know, the bodies slip around more? Oh, it's, e on? it's easier. I mean, body type plays a part to it, right? Like, maybe if he had, you know, like a really thick neck and it was the same width as his head, maybe it would pop out, right? But being sweaty kind of helps a little bit because, you know, once I start squeezing, I'm going to find that chin and my forearm's going to slide right underneath the chin. Right? So, like, if you're dry and you get to the good spot, it's nice because they can't pop their head out. But going for the submission when you're sweaty, as long as you can stay in the right spot and you get that squeeze on, arm slid right underneath his neck. There was nothing he could do about it. And, again, I was driving into him staying on top so he couldn't rear back and pop his head out because sometimes guys fall back like that or they pull away, and that helps your opponent, especially when you're sweaty, pop out. But if I drive into you, not only does it help curl your neck and secure the choke tighter, but even if you do pop out, you pop out and go to your back, and I stay on top so I can keep punching you in the face, and I'm, you know, on the A side. So you said body type kind of makes a difference. In what way do you feel like you are built to choke people out more so than other fighters? <laughs> I don't know if I'm built to choke people out or it just ends up happening that way all the time, right? Like, uh, I got kind of a weird body shape. I got these long dancer's legs, and I got a short, thick torso. So my kicks are really good, and... Uh, you know, I got a strong core, so I, maybe that helps for choking people. I don't know. And then I'm curious about the call out. I mean, you, you gave us a little backstory that he called you out, but you've been here for a long, long time, and he's a guy who's rather new. We usually see try, guys trying to go forward in the rankings. You're, you know, on your way there. You've been in the UFC. So what, what do you really have to gain from fighting a guy who's still quite new? I mean, the guy I just fought was 3-1. and one. He's pretty new, too. I mean, he, you know, and that's one thing. I finished him, Alex Perea couldn't do that, and he's getting the title shot. So, and this is the thing though, someone calls me out, all right, let's go. But I also said, if they want to give me, if they don't want to give me that fight, they want to give me somebody with a number next to their name, I'm not going to say no to that. What kind of confidence does it give you to know that you just choked out a guy that the next title challenger couldn't finish? Uh, it's just something cool to say, but it, I mean, just winning gives you a lot of confidence, right? And I, you know, just being comfortable with myself, knowing my skill set, knowing that I belong, all good stuff.